Right, hey everyone. I am in my room. A lot of lights on. I don't know if I should like shut some off. Or, like, I don't know. So I have all my clothes are on my bed right now. <laughs> but who would have thought that I had had such a, like a Pinteresty room? I know I have like weird shit. But so I guess today my brother. Sorry. Just gonna have a little like chat with me. My bunny is in here. There we go. That looks cute. Hold on. There we go. Look at that. Wow. Um, any hizzle. So, um, my brother is going to come over today and, um, one second. Hi, Kasha. Come here. Say hi. Come here. She's coming. Hi, cutie. Look at you. You're so cute. She's so big. I love you so much. Hey. Say hi. Meow. You're so cute. So let's go outside for a second. My cat wants to come outside with me. Hold on. Olivia! Maybe. Oh, it's cold out. Wait, hey! You're not supposed to be outside. I guess I'll let her come outside with me. Okay. So we're outside. Make sure none of my neighbors are out. I can't see shit right now. I I hear you. I hear you, Kitty. Hi. <laughs> you hear her? She's so excited to be outside. We usually don't let our cats go outside. They haven't had their. <laughs> okay, Kasha, you might want to go inside. The birds are like freaking out. Dude, come here. Come here. Sorry, this is gonna be. Here, let me hold you. Oh, there we go. go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, hey everyone. So, I'm outside right now, and my cat really wants to... Wait, hold on one second. So, I'm outside right now. Um, I, so my brother is coming today. We're gonna run some errands. It should be pretty normal, <laughs> normal. It should be pretty chill. Um, although I haven't done an update in a while, so symptom news is still a thing. It's, it's been getting really hard. My mood has been super, super low. Um, I had a, uh, a meeting. <laughs> I had an appointment with my psychiatrist, and um, I'm starting a new medication. I'm not going to say what it is, obviously, just for my own privacy. Um, but I'm hoping that that works. It is an SNRI, which works on the norepinephrine in your system instead of the um, serotonin receptors and whatnot. And so I've had really adverse reactions to SSRIs, and so... Um, one thing that we wanted to do was to try something different, and so that's what we're gonna do. And I can't tell if my phone's just dirty or if this is out of focus, but, um, but that's what we're gonna do. And so, um, yeah, so that's, that's a thing. I don't know if that's my brother coming or not, but, um, so it's been a, it's been a lot. There's been a lot. I didn't get admitted, although, cause, cause my dumb ass fucking forgot to go to my appointments on Monday and so I missed my therapy appointment my doctor's appointment and my dietitian appointment which dietitian appointment really isn't that big of a deal um but I missed all those appointments and now I had to reschedule them and I'm so mad because oh those are like therapy when you miss a therapy appointment you're pretty much fucked and you're not fucked but like those book really quickly and therapy is like one of the most 
helpful things in eating disorder recovery. Well, to me at least, they're a very essential part of... <laughs> Sorry, I can see my cat meowing from the window. <laughs> She's being really silly. Um, anyways, so I got those rescheduled. I got that figured out again because I'm dumb and just didn't, you know... I'm sitting on my teeth. Oops, didn't mean to flick you off. <laughs> Anyways, so I got that figured out. Um, something that my psychiatrist had said was because I had such adverse reactions to SSRIs that um, it would be a possibility that I um, would could have bipolar 2 disorder, which really wasn't something that I wanted to hear and not that I find it to not that I have any judgment on people with bipolar disorder but it's like I think I'm afraid if I it wasn't an official diagnosis by any means but it was like it was like it is a possibility for my future if maybe this SNRI doesn't work um and because you know SSRIs and SNRIs really people who have really adverse reactions like the ones that I had um, they typically need to be put on mood stabilizers, which are used for bipolar disorder. And so, and I, and he said that that is a possibility that I could have because I, you know, there are periods of time where I don't, there's a lot of things why. Um, but it's, it's hard because there is such a stigma around mental health and different like issues that people hear bipolar and they just hear crazy. Oh God, you must be crazy. And people throw, love to throw around the, like, the term bipolar and you must be bipolar because he has like really bad mood swings it's like that's not what it is at all and um i'll link a few of katie morton's videos in the description below just so that because i don't really feel like trying to explain everything but anyways the difference between bipolar one and bipolar two is that bipolar one disorder you you have experienced have to have experienced at least one state of um mania or some type of manic episode. With bipolar 2, you don't. You don't ever reach mania, but you do reach a state called hypomania, which is just like a lessened level of it. And typically people with bipolar 1, they sometimes, not all the times, but oftentimes they get themselves into trouble. They spend really huge amounts of money. They often are arrested. They make really poor decisions. They end up in the hospital and like the psych ward a lot of the times. And, um, and but that's not it's not necess it's not their fault so it's and then with bipolar 2 it's just like it is a form of bipolar disorder but it is just lessened and you typically aren't getting in trouble you you they typically find that you experience more depressive states because there is like up here that you'll see in the video just watch the video it's really informative and she's super smart and i love katie morton i will always rep katie morton and so um yeah, you can watch her videos below. Anyways, um, so I wasn't really happy to hear that. Not because I had any preconceived, like, judgments about it, but because I know that other people have, like, preconceived judgments about it, and I don't think it's fair. And I don't know. It's just, it's something that I have been thinking about a lot lately, and, um, I wish there wasn't such a stigma around any kind of like borderline personality or any kind of dissociative disorder like DID um, or bipolar disorder like I think that there are so many stigmas about sorry my brother just texted me oh um, and there are so many stigmas around mental health and different like mental health disorders and I wish it would just stop because it's like why? Why do we have to, like, judge people based on some label that they've been given? Because essentially that's what it is. Like, we're all people. We all have things that we go through. We all have things that we need help with. So, really the only thing that has the attachment to, like, the judgment is the name. Because you would hear someone who, like, oh, they don't sleep and they, you know, they have, like, really depressed episodes. And you hear that and you think, well... Some people go through that, but as soon as you say the thing, oh, they have bipolar, they're like, oh god, you must be crazy. Like, that, oh, sorry. Like, that's not what it is at all, and I'm so done with people thinking that. 
and it's just it's so damaging and it's really hurtful and honestly I just didn't wish I wish that people didn't do that and it's so unnecessary why people would I don't know I'm just ranting at this point but in terms of um like eating disorder stuff um I have a doctor's appointment next week and um it's my last week of IOP next week and um <laughs> wait for the train I love the train that goes by it's actually very peaceful at night especially because it like rumbles it'll be done soon It's a long train. Any more? Any more choo choos? Maybe not. Um, anyways, so it, I'm pretty nervous because I obviously have already hit like a downward spiral, I feel like, but I'm kind of afraid that, you know, that it's just gonna get worse. And it's like a part of me wants, wants to get sicker, but not really because. I want to be thinner, obviously. That is the point. That's not, that's not the point, but, you know, it's, there's a lot of different things, but I want to be thinner. But I know that the way that I'm doing it, becoming thinner, is not healthy, and I know that it's really damaging, but I also know that in order, at least in my mind right now, that it's pretty much you give some, you get some kind of a thing. It's like, you know, in order to be thinner... I'm gonna have to purge and I'm just gonna have to do that because my body is different and my that's just what it needs to happen in order for it to be thinner and so I'm dealing with that right now especially because it's like really kind of shameful to share like you don't want to share with your therapist like I want I'm not ready to give up the eating disorder like I'm not ready to I'm not ready to let go of it because I think I was released from um, the higher levels of care in in a state of mind really that like I wasn't ready to give it up and not that like the last five weeks and these last few months of treatment have been a waste of time, but I don't want to say that it's been a waste of time, but like really, that's a hard one because it's like, because I knew that I wasn't ready to give it up yet, but I knew that I also had to do treatment and I had to, I had to do something about what was going on because I was really sick. Um, but now I've reached a point after having, I've been in treatment since March. Um, I knew, you know, I knew from the start that I wasn't ready to give it up. And there was a, there were points of time where I was like, no, I can do this. I can fight it. I can do this. And there were motivational like episodes of that, but really collectively I know that I wasn't I know that I wasn't ready to give it up yet and that sounds so crazy like oh why would you want to hold on to this eating disorder it's like this is the thing that I leaned on it's the thing that I relied on it was the thing that I used to cope with emotions of life and it was what I used to deal with things and to have that ripped away from you is it's a hard thing to have to go through and I think people don't <laughs> really realize that like, why would you want to keep making yourself sick? Why would you keep on wanting to restrict? Why would you keep on wanting to binge and purge? It's like, you don't really understand if you don't go through it yourself. And so, sorry, I can't tell if you might be able to hear the wind blowing. It's kind of chilly outside. I might go inside. But, like, so I don't know. It's a really, it's, a, it's confusing. It's really a mind fuck. And that's totally what I'm experiencing right now. And... Um, it, it, there's a lot of guilt and shame built into that because it's like, well, you're kind of expected, like, you should want to be better, but it's shameful. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to expose the eating disorder. You don't want to say, you know what? No, I'm not ready to let go of it. And I want, not like you want it because no one wants to feel this way. No one wants to binge and purge. Oh my god, purging is so horrible. It's so physically tasking on your body too. But there is this weird form of release and this weird sense of accomplishment once you do get it, once you do use symptoms and whatnot. It makes you feel like you're good at doing something and it makes you feel like you're doing something right and 
even though it's making you sick like you just keep on going and going and going and that is really why eating disorders are so damaging because it is such a mind like there's such a mental game going on and it's really crazy it's really it's cool honestly i think i'm allowed to say this but it's pretty insane <laughs> and i think that's really difficult for people to understand um if they haven't gone through it or they don't know someone who's gone through it because it can seem really confusing and it can be like what the fuck um but you know if you're going through it right now just know that you're not crazy it's totally normal to feel like you don't want to give up the eating disorder and it's totally normal to feel scared it's totally normal to you know express hey you know i'm not ready i'm not ready to give it up and i actually it's comforting to me it's okay because you know sometimes bad things are comforting like abusive really it's like an abusive relationship like there's a reason why it takes people a really long time to leave if they ever do because it is there's a sense of comfort within that kind of relationship and this eating disorder and you it's a relationship and it's it's something that it's like bittersweet almost and that's really weird to say and it sounds really weird but it, it's true and so just know that you're not crazy if you're feeling that way you're not insane you're not gross you're not disgusting you're not like any of those things because I often feel like that and I have to tell myself a lot of the times like no Taylor you're not disgusting you have a mental illness and it's not your fault that you feel like that and it's not anything to feel shameful of either because it's just something that you're going through and it's something that is totally valid and just remember that I guess do your best to remember that I know it's really hard um yeah you're not alone and if you're feeling these ways you know it may seem crazy but it's not you're not crazy to me and um i'm gonna continue to talk about my experience you know with this whole eating disorder and re recovery <laughs> um but i totally understand when people say you know i want to recover but i'm just not there yet i'm just not ready to give it up yet and i totally understand that and then it's a really hard place to be it's super confusing and super weird and people hear that and they're like what the fuck is wrong with you but you just know that like don't worry about it you're okay it's going to be okay and if you're not there yet you're not there yet and that's okay too um and I, I don't know it's just i'm just hoping that you know, together we can you know end the stigma by talking about it more it's really uncomfortable i think for some people to hear about it it's not as uncomfortable for me to talk about it because it's like what i'm living <laughs> um but it, so we need to we need to end the stigma by talking about it and i'm that's sort of really what i'm trying to do is make people feel more comfortable within themselves because i know for a really long time i felt like really 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 stuck and really like polarized because i felt like i was the only one going through this and i felt like people looked at me like i was insane and i feel like my family looked at me like i was crazy and i feel like just i felt so alone in all this but just know that you're not alone i'm going 